Hello friends, we gathered together as a family via um, the internet to be able to experience the second Sunday of Easter year A. Um, as Father Matthew is pastor here at St. Peter's, I'm really happy to get a chance to do something like this. It's the first time I do this. For the past month, uh, you've watched as Reverend Aaron McIntyre from Knox St. Paul's United Church and myself have shared an ecumenical prayer service. Um, Reverend Aaron is on holiday this week and next week, so it falls to me to be able to find a way to connect with you. And so I'm trying this out, and I'm hoping this works. I'm not very technological. I appreciate the fact that she's able to, through Facebook and YouTube, put these videos that we've shared for the last month together. Um, but I'm grateful for this opportunity to do so now. And in two weeks' time, she and I will come back together again to share these ecumenical prayer services. But today, we have an opportunity, you and I, to be able to come to see what message we can take from the gospel this weekend. So our gospel is from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. And I'm using the Message Bible for my translation here. Later on that day, the disciples had gathered together, but fearful of the Jews, had locked all the doors in the house. Jesus entered, stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples, seeing the master with their own eyes, were exuberant. And Jesus repeated his greeting, Peace to you. Just as the Father sent me, I send you. Then he took a deep breath and he breathed into them. Receive the Holy Spirit, he said. If you forgive someone's sins, they're gone for good. If you don't forgive sins, what are you going to do with them? A Thomas, sometimes called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we saw the master, but he said, unless I see the nail holes in his hands, put my finger in the nail holes, stick my hand in his side, I won't believe it. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the room. This time Thomas was with them, and Jesus came through the locked doors, stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he focused his attention on Thomas. Take your finger and examine my hands. Take your hand and stick it in my side. Don't be unbelieving, believe. And Thomas said, my master, my God. And Jesus said, so you believe because you see me with your own eyes. Even better blessings are in store for those who believe without seeing. Jesus provided far more God-revealing signs that are written down in this book. These are written down so you will believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and in the act of believing, have real and eternal life in the way he personally revealed it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the seminary, they often teach us um, about things that we're able to bless when we're priests. Um, so you have an opportunity to be able to bless rosaries and prayer cards and statues, pets, <laughs> new homes, cars, and people. But there's something that we uh, don't bless. It's considered the Bible. Um, sometimes people will come to me and they'll say, Father Matthew, can you bless my Bible that I got as a gift or whatever? And I'll say, no, I can bless the person holding the Bible, but I don't bless the Bible because the Word of God is always alive and active, and it has been for a long time. And oftentimes we can look at passages and find that they really speak to us, particularly in the time we're living in. And that's what I seem to see through the time we're living in now, through these COVID times. Because like in the Gospel, we can easily find ourselves feeling a lot like the Apostles. We're locked away in our little rooms, our condos, apartments, houses, our rectories, our hospital rooms even, and we can easily find ourselves cut off in fear, kind of uncertain as to how things are going to be different. The apostles were gathered together like this for solidarity. Many of them, all of them probably, were fearful of the same fate that Jesus had had have coming upon them. And so they gathered together for fear of the authorities, locked in this place. And what happens? Jesus happens. Jesus finds a way to connect with them. He finds a way to reach out to them. Now, some of you may have seen uh, the John Wick movies starring Keanu Reeves. They're not my favorite, but their whole theme is, well, it's violent, but they tend to be, tends to be about revenge and revenge in, in, in a big way. Now, Jesus could easily have had revenge on these guys. You know, they were fair-weather friends. They'd abandoned him at the cross, and they had been, you know, after three years of time that he spent with them, they basically abandoned him and left him alone. He could have come into this place and really taken out anger towards them in revenge. But he doesn't do that. He knows they need him, and so he comes to them. And he brings his peace with them. He enters into their midst. 
He breathes on them something of his spirit, something of himself, something of his peace, and he restores them to some sense of connection that they are looking for. Now, it's interesting. He does this, but they don't really change. They stay locked in their place for an extra week. We think to ourselves, if we had an experience of Jesus that comes into our lives powerfully, wouldn't we want to react to that and, and step out and be different? The apostles are not that much different from us. They're very human. And so we see something of that humanity there. They're reluctant to act because, again, they're still fearful. And there's an extra person in our midst who's an interesting character, and that is Thomas. Many of you know my father's a permanent deacon. My dad will be ordained 30 years this November as a deacon. And one of his very first homilies he ever gave, um, he preached on this gospel of Thomas. And dad gave a very interesting idea. He, um, he commented on the fact that Thomas, and we see it in the gospel today, is called the twin, Didymus. The scripture never tells us who that twin is. But dad's idea with his homily that he related to that I'd like to focus a little bit on here this morning as well is perhaps we are the twin. We are Thomas's twin. Because Thomas, I think more than any of the apostles, particularly in this gospel, really seems to relate well with, with I think, with you and I in this time. He's full of questions. He's full of doubts and fears and anxieties. He doesn't relate or refer or, or take the the response that the apostles have of saying, we have seen the Lord, he wants to experience it for himself. And he's prepared to wait. Wait eight days, it says in the gospel, before Jesus is able to come to him. And then when Jesus comes to him, he comes to Thomas the same way he does with the others. He comes and he reveals his wounds. At the beginning of the gospel, Jesus shows his wounds to the apostles. Same with Thomas. He comes in and he shows him his wounds. We don't know if Thomas touches his wounds. The gospels don't show us that. But Thomas, who's got anxieties and fears and doubts and is very human, is the one person in the gospel who reacts with a moment of faith. He responds when he sees the risen Lord with the words, my Lord and my God. Thomas, more than any of the others, sees, reacts, and moves forward a changed man. Whereas the other apostles in the story sit cocooned in their fear for an extra week, Thomas experiences what they do and acts on it. And I think that there's a lesson in there for us too. Oftentimes we can be really hard on Thomas in this gospel, but we shouldn't be. Because what he has gone through, we go through. We get fearful. We look around and we think, where is God in the midst of this COVID? What, what's happening here? Does God really care? Is God real? You know, believing in the resurrection, believing in the real presence of Jesus, believing that God is still crazy in love with you and I and everybody else on this blue planet of ours. It takes faith to believe that. It's not easy but we move forward in trust. And God is asking us, like Thomas and the apostles, to step forward in faith, to reach out beyond our cocoon of fear and to make a difference out there. If we believe that Christ is real and resurrected and alive in our midst, then we are called to act. We are called to go forth, to go forward and to act, and to find ways to do that. Sure, in some cases, we're a little bit limited in that because we're not able really to get out there social distance wise is still present and so forth through our work or through our, our, our whatever. We might not be able to do that right now. But is there a way that we can be an emissary of hope in our world? Is there a way that we can reach out and connect and make a difference with others? You know, trying to find new ways, even like I'm doing here with you, with sharing from the, this uh, video link, you know, is a way of being able to share faith and to keep sparks of hope alive. Some of you are, are doing that with your neighbors and your family members, reaching out and getting groceries. You know, some of the single parents that are around who can't bring their kids grocery shopping because some of the places don't allow more than one person at a time to go through are finding ways to keep the kids or to find ways to travel in a car alongside and to stay in a parking lot and keep an eye on the children while they're in another car while the parent is at the store. Finding ways to be able to reach out, to do FaceTime, to call, to be able to stand even outside the window of a home of somebody we know and care about and to talk to them with distance. There are all kinds of ways that we can pray for, connect, reach out and support people in our community. And God's inviting us to be able to reach out and to be able to move forward and to find ways to do that in the world in which we live. God does not leave us. He's forever present. And he wants you and I, as the Christians that we are, followers of the Christ, to do our part to help other people come to know and love him too in our world. And I think that might be the challenge that we can focus on 
as we gather together as a family this time. So that said, we come before the Lord and we bring intentions to him. And we continue to pray in a special way for all those on the front line who continue even after a month to give time, talent, uh, and heart to be present to their brothers and sisters in the community. We think of the doctors and nurses and those working in, in, um, in uh, homes of the elderly and in different places in our community, with those who are in need. Um, we think of all those in the funeral direction business. We think uh, also those in our police services and our paramedics, our fire departments. We think of all those who are out there, present, the truckers who are bringing food back and forth across our country so that our grocery stores have, have what's needed to be able to feed us. Those working in those grocery stores, keeping things clean, we think of all those who are involved on that front line, that God in a special way will continue to inspire them, keep their health strong, to give them courage and strength as they continue to be models for each and every one of us in our world. We also pray in a particular way for all those who are fearful and anxious, who feel like the apostles locked away in fear and anxiety and depression. You know, the longer that this goes on, the more it feels can feel heavy and empty, in particular those who are alone can really feel isolated and trapped that God in a special way will bring comfort and peace. We think of those we know and love who have died, that we can't have a funeral service for the way we wish to, to celebrate their lives. Those who have been st struggling with effects of COVID even now. We think of all those intentions that are on our hearts at this time that mean something to us. We lift them all to the Lord and we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. And gathered together as a family, we can share that prayer that Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Heavenly Father, we watch, ask that you watch over each and every one of us at this time. Fill us with all the graces, the strength, the courage, the faith, the hope of the resurrection. Rebuild us anew, Lord, so that we can, each and every one of us, in our own unique style, in our own unique way, share your hope, your peace, your love with our brothers and sisters in our community. And we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Have a great week. Talk to you next week.